how do we decide wine and bruschetta? How was the the board and the bottles the plan? You know, my partner um, was going to Italy back in the day and really loved um, this experience in Italy where you could go and do what we're doing, like get some noshes with friends, hang out, no pressure to order a bunch of food, like grab a glass of wine. Maybe it was like dinner, maybe it was just lunch. You could do the flexibility of it was really key. So came back to Phoenix and, and really thought that, and I appreciated it as well. And so I think that when we think about the type of food that we do in the experience, like you guys could roll in here and just have beers and wine glass, and our team would bat an eye. And there's not a lot of restaurants that can say that, right? And then on the flip side of the coin, there's not a lot of bars that you can go to and have great wine and great beer and great food, right? So we really wanted to live in this space where it was really flexible. Like you could come in here, work on your laptop, grab an iced tea and a salad and cruise out. You could have a meeting. You can have a first date, hang with your friends, do happy hour. What we wanted to do was stay in that space of like the ultimate flexibility for how people want to hang. Solid. I like it. So, and. The suppression of the use of marijuana and of the forces lurking behind it are the most important jobs this department is now engaged in. In 1930, the records on marijuana in the Washington office of the Narcotics Division scarcely filled a small folder like this. Today, they fill cabinets. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Coloradians, and everyone that's smart enough to listen from the outside. It's one of the most amazing plants we've ever discovered. The pot party, the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a cup. Hey guys, before we get this party started, I want to make a quick apology. I didn't realize I had a cachet of a couple old episodes. So here's an episode we forgot to drop from uh, when Postino was about to open their third location. As you heard, Lauren Bailey kind of giving you the rundown of what makes Postino great. Well, here's the episode of behind the scenes of how it all came to fruition. And a little bit of fun from Kip and Chris. Started. That's when I see the spikes and lunch. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another week of Storm d'Appetit. With your host, as always, it's me, Kip. And to my left, I got my boy, CB. How are you, CB? Dude, doing wonderful. That's doing what I wonderful. Like. Second time back in yeah. life. I know. we. Uh, uh, that's an interesting way to look well, at it. Well, in-person interviews. Oh, uh, yes, that is true. So Chris is back. He did uh, a couple-week hiatus, as y'all saw those other episodes. He was traveling, backpacking through the Wyoming, Montana area. How was it? It was great. The yeah. Tetons, if you haven't been, get up there. Magical. You look tan as fuck, and you look like you got a new life. You're ready to rock for this episode. You ready to do this? I am. I am, too. And I'm really fired up because our guest and our location today is probably one of going to be, it's a top tier for us. We're coming to you from the Postino on Broadway, 145 North Broadway, the second location of Postino, with the founder of the Postino group, which is Miss Lauren Bailey. How are you today, Lauren? I'm so good. It's so good to be here in person with you guys. Yeah, you say that now. Give us a couple minutes. You're going to hate the shit out of us. (laughs) No, uh, I do appreciate it. Thank you again for not only opening up a wine bar in our backyard, but the regular happy hour specials. I feel like everything is tailored specifically to me here. It is. We were thinking about you when we did it. (laughs) A lot of people say that. So, uh, (laughs) as you may know that's what this kind of podcast is but before we get the show on the road i want to give a shout out to our sponsors uh this episode like every episode since early 2019 is brought to you by live nation um live nation obviously has been affected just as everybody else has in the amidst covid so they're trying to do what they can to save the crew everyone that works for bands across the nation is hurting right now and so they have a fundraiser going on you can donate through the website livenation.com and you can also check out a slew of home concerts they have Bands from the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and today. Look at that. Sounds like a perfect radio ad. So go check out (laughs) LiveNation.com. That's www.LiveNation.com and pick the band that gets you high. Whew, that was a mouthful. That was a good ad read. Thank you. I I did that one professionally because I'm sober still. But the the wine has just gotten here. So, Lauren, I'm going to pass it off. We ask the same first question every week, and it's usually CB. So, Chris, take the reins. All right. So, are we a transplant or a native to Colorado? Me? I'm a transplant. You are? Yeah. I have a little enthusiasm. Can't you guys? We, we you share don't even the, really technically live here, do you? Because I love it here. Like, I wish I was a native. Yeah. Nah. Do you have a house here? Or no, they're too expensive. No joke. When we <laughs> opened Lohi, I was like, Craig, to my partner, I'm like, let's go buy a condo. Like, we're going to come here all the time. It's great. We can leave this summer, you know. 
And these condos in Lohi were, were like 900 grand, and this was five years ago. They're probably $9 million now. I mean, what a horrible idea. I mean, you should have done it. That's a great investment opportunity. It's a, in a long line of great investment opportunities that I've missed along the way. Well, you seem to have done pretty well. And for those that don't know at home, you uh, you live in Arizona and you started the Postino brand. Y'all are on something like 16, 17 fucking locations now and started based out of like the Phoenix. Yeah. The Phoenix office. Yep. So I was a waitress and um, put myself through college waiting tables and bartending. And, um, you know, it was a great thing to do. And then I looked around one night, and this is before the intro webs that you younger people um, have leaned on for the majority of your life. But you couldn't just like Google how much don't, does it cost to, to our open age. a restaurant. Yes. This is 2020. <laughs> you cannot assume our age. Your age isn't here. <laughs> yes, yeah. Chris is old as fuck. Oh, it's the Botox, huh? No. No, that's are, all are we? <laughs> <laughs> that's lack of sunscreen <laughs> and being outside all the time. Um, okay, so uh, I apologize for no. It's okay. The so, so we couldn't. You back then, like I feel like my mom right now. Like back then, little kitties, gather around. Let me tell you about the days of before the intro webs. We like to use maps as our guiding reference. Did you have like a Tom Tom, or were you talking like book of maps? No, I'm talking about print out map quest and like bring your directions along with you. Okay, like, that's like us going to the beach in college. You're you can like, actually. Where, where were we you in can college? actually tell how old someone is when you can say like, did you have a cell phone? How old were you when you got your first cell phone? When did you get your first email address? What was your AIM name? And if you don't have one, then you're either too old was, or too young. I was young. talking to this group of entrepreneurs, and I was like, you know, I got my email in college, and I remember thinking, this is so dumb. Like, I can't believe they're making us do this. <laughs> Legitimately. And yeah, they were, their faces were like, you, your parents didn't give you your email address that they signed you up for when you were two? I'm like, uh, no. So anyways. You I couldn't even have parents that love me that much that would have done that <laughs> if that was the thing. <laughs> They were like, get the fuck to work. Go cut the yard. <laughs> don't email me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't even like it when we text. <laughs> okay, so you were you were So you couldn't, you couldn't Google how much does it cost to o- open a restaurant. So I went to Nantucket, bartend, saved $30,000, and truly, in my mind, I'm like, I could probably open two restaurants for this, you know? Come back to Phoenix, meet my, my partner, who is 10 years ahead of me, doing this, realize my $30,000 isn't going to get very far, but he and I were all about rubbing six together, so we did that. And, like, just made it happen. Why, why are you laughing like that? I definitely, I was not thinking financially at first. I was like, sweet, y'all fucked a lot. That's a southern saying. You should know that one. Oh, I, now I do, but that's not what I was thinking. I mean, there's a, there's a booklet of southern sayings that I'm sure y'all are familiar with. We were just yeah, taught them growing up. We didn't have like, a book for them. Yeah. yeah. It's but, like, sounds like making whoopee. Exactly. <laughs> making whoopee. Same, same genre. Anyways, so we just made it happen, and uh, any money we made in one deal, we'd roll into the next one, and we did that for a long time, and we were eating ramen noodles and, like, you know, not paying taxes and, like, Hell holding, yeah! Like, Fuck the man! Well, <laughs> when I say not paying taxes, we were like, you should pay your estimateds, and we're like, well, we're going to have to pay them at the end of the year, you know? You kind of do stuff as an entrepreneur that you uh, probably shouldn't. There's a lot of bending the rules. Which and betting on yourself. So true. there's something to be appla- you have to applaud that. Yeah, as you well. got it. You can work as hard as you want. And I will tell you, like COVID, being an entrepreneur and having that like scrappy mentality that you're like ingrained with, it's never been a better time to be dealing with no money, circumstances beyond your control, and having to be creative. It's like you know, it's the entrepreneurial shit, engine is built for this COVID world. You know. So you're not freaking out. Uh-huh. No, I'm leaning into this. I got to tell you, I really you am. You need to lean into this. She just got me all fired up, Chris. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get you real fired up. Hold on, hold on. Because so it's like, you know, what's that quote? Like, a crisis is a terrible thing to waste, and I believe in that in a big way. Don't politicians say that? Do they? That's bad then. In sales to go. Now we're doing 20 to 30% in sales. So you told me like six months ago I could do that much in to-go business. I'd be like, oh, my God, sign me up. How do I do it? Now, granted, we've lost a ton of other business, but... Like, it's made us be better. We want to be the best at to-go that there is. We want to think about the boxes and the stickers and the packaging and the seamlessness of it. And, like, you know, it's, it's this thing. You can either sit around and, like, lick your wounds or you can get your dog with the bone. Like, it's a decision that you make. I understand. I get you. I was just busting your balls there for Don't a get me on my soapbox about this no, positive I, I'm, thinking I'm mentality. I feel like the term is pivot. Every restaurateur or business owner has had to find a way to pivot during these times. So you mentioned you know, the to-go orders. Y'all had maybe three of them a day. And now you're seeing 33% of your business is coming from the to-go window. Yeah. Is it is that applicable across the board? So for people with the bruschetta, are we seeing like spikes as well? Like we talk about weed and how it's been seen as essential. How's the food sales been? How's business been? I said this to the girls when they got here. You know, like, you look around, and I think that people 
all these people in this whole restaurant have a pantry full of food and a freezer full of food because we all went out and bought a ton of it. But here they are still out in restaurants wanting to eat, and we're doing it in a safe way. But but people are fundamentally social creatures, and they want to be connecting in this way. And so restaurants and food bring people together. Now, whether that's with just your family in your house, getting your favorite meal from Postino in your house, we're going to be there for you. Nice plug. I like it's that. It's true. That was really that's a great one. I like yeah. it. I like And the best part about it is you haven't skipped a beat. Oh, I turned the volume up. Um, sorry, I scared myself. Um, <laughs> y'all haven't skipped a beat on the, the bottles and boards, so you'll still have the dank-ass deals Mondays and Tuesdays. So if you're trying to save a little bit of money, but also you're, you've got that itch to go do at least something, yes. you can swing up here on a Monday or Tuesday when not so many folks would be out and about. And it won't break the bank on you. Yeah, and we're doing um, we're doing board and bottle to go if you want, and um, oh, I believe shit. we're still doing that. Yeah, we are, right? Yeah. Yeah. There Why you go. not? You I know? had to look around too. <laughs> I don't actually know. Um, and then y'all, y'all are actually, and you really did lean into it. I mean, obviously we've seen doors are shutting everywhere, and it's a precarious time. But hopefully y'all are going to have a third one opening up, literally right down the street from our house at Ninth in Colorado soon as well. Yeah, we were pretty far along in that one. We were supposed to open in April, so we were kind of, as the I mentioned, the movie theater and all that other shit didn't open. Yeah, yeah. we were uh, a little pregnant with that one, so it's happening. The baby's on the way, and uh, there was no backpedaling there. So we're we're going forward. Well, we don't want to get into it yet, but Chris and I have come up with some ideas for menu items for your new, uh, the new location. I love this. Yeah, you're welcome. So we'll get into those first. In regards to the wine selection and R and D, do you get to? Are you the sampler? Or are y'all going back to Italy and goofing off? Because we've been joking and planning and those kinds of things. How does that work? And how do I become a team member? It is a really awesome job. Like if I told you what I ate for lunch today, you'd be like pretty surprised. Please and last elaborate. night, like where we're cruising around, um, we go and try a lot of food, and the traveling is a big piece of it, so um, we love to eat tons of stuff, and we want to see, like last night I was at Uncle at like 10 o'clock at night, we went to, um, what's the place, the wine bar, Riot, uh, Riot, Noble Riot, Noble Riot, love had, both of those places, oh my places. god, they have the greatest wine um, uh, by the glass right now, a whole lineup of oranges, and um, really good, so what we're doing all the time is seeing what everybody else is doing, we go to the farmer's market, want to try new stuff think of things i cook all the time um and covid was great because i was home and i was really bored so i was like doing tons of food came up with a lot of ideas um so we all collaborate on it and then we have a team of culinarians that work for the restaurants that we're all kind of sending each other pictures pinterest instagram traveling your own stuff trying things and um putting out food that we really like to eat and that we think other people do too well, like you're probably legitimately going to make a menu item today. I mean, I have a feeling about this. Well, oh, that's sure. a perfect segue into our next segment, which we created today called Build Your Own Board. You ready to do that? <laughs> yeah, but hold on, hold on. I am curious yeah. about one thing before moving into that. Go like, for when it. When did you start? When did the first Postino open? 2001. 2001. Fuck, really? So we are not a baby, y'all. And, d- hold no, on. I didn't did think you? y'all are just new to me. <laughs> How, so, so, okay, so you opened up the first one. How long into doing that were you like, holy shit, we just hit a gold mine? We didn't open the second one until 2009. And then after that, like... I do appreciate the fire He knows department. the backstory of this when I realized there was a fire station, like, <laughs> literally, scary. like, a week after we signed the lease. <laughs> They signed the lease, and they found out that's a fire department. <laughs> I, go, I go over there, and I was like, um, is this, like, a real fire department? And he's like, yeah. I go, um, how often are y'all going in and out of here? And he's like, uh, pretty regularly. I'm like, like, once a day, twice a day. He's like, just depends. I'm like, during lunch, during dinner. It's like, you're, he's you're like, crazy. He's like, I don't pick them. <laughs> <laughs> and then 25 I said, times. Gee, would you guys mind? Would you guys mind starting the siren like once you get up to the main road there? And he's like, yeah, we would. I was like, okay. I can't believe they didn't bend for you on that I one. I know. I totally was like, you want free bruschetta for life? Y'all just come over and just don't play that thing until you get out to the street, you know? I mean, you could have been it's like... It's a real buzzkill. Yeah. You could have been like, we swore the fire department. It had a sticker and everything, free bruschetta. Yeah, my boyfriend's a fireman. Them. Like, you know, he's, he's like not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> We actually watched that movie about those guys down in Arizona. We did. Yeah, it scares me. All right, so that was a great question, Chris. So you went 2001, 2009, and then just kind of caught like a wildfire? Well, l- let subject. me be clear. It sounds a lot more thoughtful and planned than what it actually was. We have shiny object syndrome, and that mainly entails, like, finding really cool old buildings that no one else wants to, like, do anything with or 
and we love them. And so a lot of times we would find a real estate and then we'd figure out what it wanted to be. So there was a lot of other concepts in the midst of this, like Joyride and like, yeah, you can appreciate, huh? I want to do this so bad. Yeah. Shiny object syndrome is real and it's awesome. You just have to like. I didn't know that was a thing and I got it. Yeah, you do. Damn it. 